Hello, everybody. I'm Mario Linares, and I'm broadcasting from Cabo Frio, Brazil. And I've got on uh, the other side of the earth, 180 degrees for me. I have the honor of talking tonight to Dr. Florian Congoli uh, on my uh, right, right under me here. Say hello, hello Dr. Hello. Florian. How are you? Hello. And I've got we've got also Professor Jean-Marie Dubois on, on his right. Hello, Professor. How are you? And also uh, Professor Uishiro Mizutani. Hello, Professor. How are you? So we are broadcasting from three continents again, South America, Europe, and Asia. We've got in Japan, Dr. Florian Congoli and, and Professor Uishiro Mizutami. Let's start uh, with our uh, newcomer. Yes, uh, we have here Professor Mizutami for the first time. And uh, it's I, I was talking to you before we went live. It's a great honor to talk to you and uh, I admire your work very much. So welcome to the Sips of Science. Your, uh, the symposium named after you is one of the highlights of the event. Good morning for you. It's seven o'clock in Japan right now. Good morning, Professor. Good morning. Good. V very good. You. Yes, nice to meet you. Mm -hmm. uh, let's start with Dr. Florian. So Dr. Florian, we have here again uh, Professor Jean-Louis Dubois, and uh, we are going to talk uh, about the Musitami, uh, 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 Mizutami, uh, uh, Mizutani Symposium, International Symposium. Yes, but I would like to have your uh, you welcoming our guests yes. and our viewers yes. for this ninth episode of Sips of Science. Let's talk about the largest event on sustainability through science and technology in the world. Hello, Dr. Florian. Good morning. Yes, uh, hello. Good morning. Good morning here. Good evening there. So, by the way, uh, just to make an um, uh, observation, we, uh, me and Professor Mizutani, we are both in Japan, but in different cities. I am in Osaka and he's in Nagoya. So, basically, we are uh, three continents, but uh, four different cities. Four different right cities. Now. Exactly. Yeah. So, uh, Dr. Florian, uh, we, we, we mentioned before that this is one of the highlights of SIPs, yes, but we are talking about 50 international symposia, nine Nobel laureates, and yeah. 600 other uh, scientists yeah. from 80 countries. Tell us a little bit about SIPs, about the Sustainable Industrial Processing Summit and Exhibition, uh, Sustainability Through Science and Technology. Well, you know, uh, 360 degrees. Mm -hmm meaning that um, uh, it's so multi-dimensional and multi uh, multi uh, you know uh, uh, including all fields of science in such a way that the synergy uh, becomes so great and one of the strongest points of SIPs. so uh, we are starting uh, from um, uh, imagine uh, i usually say this all the time imagine an astronaut going on different planets you have to take care from the geography of the planet to the minerals, to the soil, uh, to the metals, to the extraction, to the refining, to uh, using the composite material, light material. To the gases material. in the atmosphere, to yeah, the legal exactly aspects, the everything, atmosphere. right? Um, everything. So composite materials and intelligent materials is very important, intelligent materials. That's Ms. Tomney work and Professor Jean-Marie work. So this is um, this is the key, and then not only this, but you have to take care of legal uh, legal aspects. You have to take care of human life, um, the, the um, how human life will react to a different planet, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So uh, and also uh, they deal with political decisions. Sometimes you know going to a different planet now it is in the in the private sector, but prior prior to was the monopoly of the government. But still, even the private sector has a cooperation with NASA or other. Uh, or, or government agencies to go up. So basically, uh, you know, the human, the, the reality of human being has this 60 degrees, which always we forget. We forget because we live in our normal life and we don't think about this, we don't distance ourselves. So, but that is SIPS, includes all these 60 degrees of sun, all in 60 degrees, all different fields of science and uh, technology. And this is one of the strongest points because this creates the energy. So, sorry, this creates synergy first and then energy after. Synergy because, you know, 
you, you, you bring together all these different fields of science. Historically, exactly. we have divided field of science in different fields because kind of our, because of our ignorance, you know. But at, at the end, deep down, science is one. You, it's you're really multidisciplinary, cannot... right? Yes. Sorry, again? So, science is multidisciplinary. Yes, yes. Science is one. All yes. these are just a part of one science. So we cannot divide their organic from inorgan organic chemistry. Sure, historically there are different subjects in school, different subjects, uh, you know. But uh, life is um, organic and inorganic. Or inorganic. You cannot divide. Yes. Okay, I'm dealing with life in the or inorganic part only, and I forget organic, or organic and I forget inorganic. Mm -hmm. So uh, human body is organic and inorganic actually. It's wrong to say the chemistry of human body is just uh, organic. No, mm -hmm. there are many things that are inorganic. So this is SIPS. Very good. 600 degrees. Very good. The other point is that we start from fundamentals, which is very important, to the deep down application. That this is very important because the synergy is the greatest and we bring into life all the discoveries, uh, all the discoveries of... Uh, of uh, uh, discoveries of, uh, science, of uh, fundamental science. And here we are at Professor Mizutani. Uh, uh, his work is, uh, is in, in, in basic, uh, in, in the basic science, in fundamental science. And so it is a theoretical work, bar, but with lots of application. So probably Professor Mizutani has not dealt with application, but his work influenced uh, the, you know, the uh, various aspects of applying his discoveries mm -hmm. and Professor yes. jean Marie discoveries in reality so of course okay. crystal for example it is a very very you know it's a very uh very uh, uh theoretical subject it's a very theoretical subject and then in the beginning you just uh, uh you know just to know if uh, this crystal structure exists quasi periodical uh quasi periodical um, uh, materials or mm -hmm. i mean in the in the popular term quasi crystals so the, the issue is in the beginning it was did it exist or not? And then uh, in the beginning and um, it was discovered by Professor Shetman, and at the same time also it was observed by by uh, Professor Jean Marie, but it was not uh, uh, quantified as such. So uh, and then this in the beginning was just um, just a purely physical and chemical you know discovery. So I see. Just for the book, just for the book. So the society, the society of crystallography. And had a definition that uh, of crystals, very periodic uh, materials, periodic structure materials, and then they changed it after the theory was proven. And Jean Marie and Professor and Professor Mizutami uh, worked hard on this, and then they proven the theory. Especially Pro Professor um, Jean Marie was um, was uh, one of the. He went against uh, the, the uh, people that were against the theory. So he was against the, the wave of the ocean, uh, while all the others who were ridiculizing the theory. It was the theory, and then it was the, our discovery. And then uh, Jean, Jean Marie didn't care about what people were saying, so he believed on the discovery. And in his in his newly established institute, he proven the theory, proven the theory in the lab. So there was no more. And also Professor Mizutani also worked in a similar direction. So at the end of the day, it was just a discovery, just a theoretical discovery. Very uh, good. Do we have just crystals or quasi yes. crystals or quasi periodic materials? The most scientific term is quasi periodic, uh, quasi periodic materials. Do they exist or not? And then we prove that they exist. But mm -hmm. then, okay, if we if we stop here, it is a good discovery. It's a curiosity. Leave it in the shelves of the library. That's it. But no, because the crystals today are applied in many fields. And Jean Marie and Professor Mizutami have proven this. So, oh, this, this is very yeah. Uh, this is fantastic so. because I was talking to uh, Professor Mizutani before we went live, and uh, we were talking about this about the uses of these discoveries and things that can be brought to everyday life, such as frying a steak. Yes, frying. Fr so right. so. So, I mean, and if you think, I mean, technology is uh, in everything. And just interrupting you a little bit, Professor, uh, Dr. Florian, I'm sorry, 
but you're talking about <laughs> Professor Jean-Marie Dubois, and you're talking about observing. And I see that there, that's a telescope uh, behind him. <laughs> uh, good evening, Dr. Jean-Marie. We, we got this to your... This is... Observatory. Yeah, exactly. I would like to, to, to uh, tell us, you to tell us a little about where you are, because that's a telescope, uh, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, it's, good evening. It's uh, good evening. It's uh, an amateur telescope. Uh -huh. already it doesn't look like amateur for us but uh well, since we don't know so much about <laughs> yeah for a bit it looks super professional but okay yeah. so it's uh it's installed in a, a dome uh -huh. which uh, i will not open so far because uh, it's raining outside oh, oh tonight, tonight i'm not tonight i'm not going to do any observation because the oh. weather is not good Oh, but, uh, yeah. Florian asked me to to show you this uh, this uh -huh. telescope. Mm -hmm. So you you see it behind me, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah. uh, you, you see this uh, red dot. Uh, this is uh, the uh, what is called the mount, uh -huh. which is uh, electrical engines uh -huh. that uh, orient the telescope, and okay. uh, the other one compensates for the rotation of the earth so okay it moves it moves at a speed which is equal to the speed of the earth uh -huh. on the axis, but in the opposite direction uh -huh. i see with this the sky uh, is uh, immobile Bombay. and uh, with uh, a bit more technique but i will not let the, 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 the details uh, with uh -huh. this i can make longer exposure photographies mm -hmm. and uh, this is what i enjoy now uh -huh. i'm retired so it's my my main my main uh, job now to to make mm -hmm. pictures of the galaxies and nebulae in the, in the mm -hmm. sky very 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 interesting well mm -hmm. so let's uh, get down to work uh, dr florian what are we going to start with today well, I, I started a little bit. It is just um, the symposium we dedicated to Professor Mizutani, his life achievement. Uh -huh. um, we uh, will cover all his uh, basic science and, um, and uh, discoveries. I think Jean-Marie is in a better position to make, uh, to make a, a resume of uh, Professor Mizutani achievement because they also work together. And uh, when you make a, resume of Professor Mizutani uh, achievements from uh, an observatory with a telescope there. It is uh, very, very particular. I think, uh, you know, I don't think I've ever, ever seen live from an observatory before, but <laughs> this is what... <laughs> yeah, me neither. Me neither. I think it's the this first is, time. Uh, this is, you know, we saw it when we visited Jean-Marie, but not this big uh, one. This is a big observatory, Jean-Marie, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is in the south. Of well, uh, this is the the um, resolution of this uh, telescope is uh, much higher, much better than uh, the other one. Than what we saw because, yeah, in uh, in that uh, yes. So I have not seen it from from close up. Yeah, but this is the first time I'm 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 seeing it. It also. Uh, so, professor, so Shabani. from an observatory. I'm oh, sorry. Yes. No, no, because uh, you said the weather is not very good today. Last week, the weather was not so good also because it was a big storm. So yeah. uh, how does it affect your research, this kind of, I mean, because... Well, I, the, had, uh -huh. I had another one uh, today, the same uh -huh. as a week ago, and the router again was killed by lightning. Oh. Uh, I'm, I'm connected with my cell phone again. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a very good connection. Yeah, so much better than last time. Much better, yes. Yes, but yes. The, the point is, uh, the point is that I'm uh, in a remote place to uh -huh. have a clear sky. This is why I, I, I installed myself in this place. Uh -huh. but, uh, the the uh, electrical network is a bit weak, and uh, mm -hmm. okay, so it's a remote, remote countryside, and uh, mm -hmm. okay, so nothing is perfect. 
Yeah. So from, a, from an observatory, he was going to speak about the achievement of Professor Mizutani. And this is a little so, session. Uh, Nobody has done this. <laughs> so it's, well, the, the, the story is uh, related to metallic alloys. So when we say metal, metal means that uh, the uh, cohesion of the atoms in a, in a metal is brought by the sharing of electrons by the different uh, atoms. And these electrons are mobile. So they, you, you can imagine that you have a, a, a lattice of ions and a sea of uh, electrons uh, around them. And uh, these electrons, they have a, a very specific behavior which is related to the fact that they are diffracted by the positive ions, by the lattice uh, of, uh, of the crystal. And the uh, uh, un understanding of this uh, um, phenomenon dates back to the first half of the 20th century. Uh, essentially by a British metallurgist called Hume Rossley, who uh, designed rules to explain how this works. This is the so-called Hume Rossley rules. But the refined understanding of this phenomenon and all the details and how, how it, this explains why this specific structure forms and not another one. In, in the huge variety of, uh, of crystals, of metallic crystals, only some possibilities appear in nature, are selected by nature, and not all the other ones. And Can you give me an example? Uh, which I think which euro will enter into, into the details. Okay. But, uh, if, you, if you look at uh, copper zinc, uh, mm -hmm. alloys, for instance, okay. uh, the so-called brass alloy. Uh, you you see uh, hexagonal structures at one side. I've forgotten okay. if it is the copper rich or the zinc rich, but mm -hmm. it does not matter. But on one side, uh, when it is rich in one element, you have hexagonal structures. And then if you change the ratio between copper and zinc, you see uh, uh, other phases which appear, and at the other end, the, uh, the structure is uh, um, cubic. So on the copper ridge, it is cubic, on the zinc ridge, it is hexagonal. And okay. why is it so? It is because uh, copper brings one electron and zinc brings two electrons. So okay. if you change the concentration of copper uh, versus zinc, you change the amount of electrons in that form this electronic C, and the uh, Hume Rossley rules explain you why it is this structure that appears and not another. And the, the, the details of this mechanism are very, very intricate. They, they are uh, complex, and uh, Uichiro and his collaborators, uh, they use the uh, uh, very powerful. Uh, um, methods to compute uh, the physics of these uh, materials, mm -hmm. and they've sorted out all the details in a huge variety of, uh, of uh, metallic crystals, uh, mm -hmm. and, and this is what we will celebrate uh, during the symposium. Uh, it's not, the, of course, the achievements of uh, Uichiro and Mizutani are much broader than this, but I think this is the core of his uh, lifetime achievement. Very good. Thank you very much. And before uh, allowing uh, uh, Professor Mizutani to talk about the symposium, about his lifetime achievement, I'd like to show a video that oh. uh, was produced about the Mizutani International uh, uh, Symposium. So uh, congratulations to the guys from the the creation department dr florian yes so 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 let's take a look at this video here
very, very interesting professor, Mr. Tommy. First of all, congratulations for the symposium. And what should we expect in this symposium, professor? Well, first of all, I must clearly and slowly explain the very fundamentals of the phenomena John Marie just mentioned. And uh, it's in early 90, in 19s, are uh, in 1920s, uh, Hume Rosary discovered his uh, original law. And, but this is very simple. And a few years later, um, Nobel uh, uh, recipients, uh, Motto and Jones, uh, provided very beautiful, but very simple theory to mm -hmm. explain the result of Hume Rosary. And this is we call based on free electron model. And such free electron model can be applied only to uh, elements like copper and zinc, as John Marie told us. Okay. But look at the periodic table. There are so called transition metal series. Transition metal series uh, include iron cobalt, nickel, and other titanium, and so on. Their treatment based on simple theory is not easy. It was a okay. yeah, big uh, uh, trouble to us. And however, no progress has been advanced in the 20th century until um, Schichtmann discovered cozy crystals in 1984, I think. Okay. And immediately after that, uh, Anpan Tsai, who is a Chinese living in Japan, discovered a series of stable cozy crystals based in the aluminum, copper, iron, aluminum, copper, ruthenium and aluminum copper osmium. Here you have transition metal elements like iron, ruthenium and osmium. So humility and however, Ampansai claimed that we have humility rule for such complicated compounds. Many people was really surprised by his finding. <laughs> and why humorosary rule can be applied to compounds containing a large amount of transition metal elements. Mm -hmm. That's the point. I, my PhD thesis was experimental studies of humorosary alloys based on noble metals like copper, zinc, etc. Et mm -hmm. Okay. So I have enough knowledge on this field, but I, I did other things when I was a uh, professor at Nagoya University uh, up to the retirement from university at the age of 63. Uh, it was 2005. Okay. And at that time, I decided myself to concentrate myself on the studies of cumulative rule for complex compounds like cozy crystals containing large amount of transition metal elements. That is my uh, life work. Became, it, it became my life work. And so almost 20 years has passed uh, after I start, restarted the work of Human Rule in 2005. And now I have the so-called unified picture of the human rule. That is what I'm going to give at the deck, at the symposium and summit conference. Okay. Very good. Very good. Uh, Dr. Florian, Dr. Florian, if you, if you could move the computer a little bit to your left, uh, I think because of the light behind this you. One? This way? Yeah. Maybe if, if you could move maybe a little bit yourself. To your, well, okay. I think the sun has moved in the back. And 
Yeah, this way, this way, better, better. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, Dr. Florian, uh, this uh, all this life experience with uh, successful research. What is the importance of exchanging this kind of knowledge? Yes, of uh, some of the greatest minds in the world, and I here include the Professor Bisutani, yes, and Professor Jean Marie, with, uh, uh, for example, young engineers. They're starting. Uh, in the industry early or even in the academy and to have the opportunity of them for them to mix this experience this exchange of experience what is the importance uh to the formation of this uh young generation of uh, engineers and scientists well you know the uh, this is uh, an excellent question that uh, always uh, has a complex uh, reply uh, the issue is that uh, um, young generation uh, do not uh, view, at least at, at this moment, science as a, as a, you know, as a life-making, uh, you know, uh, profession, um, a profession doing for the whole their entire life, and then uh, they uh, sometimes do not find it uh, very uh, fun, bringing a lot of money, of dealing with science. And at the same time, uh, they sometimes they consider it boring, uh, which none of these points are true, but uh, these are myths. Life creates myths, and uh, kind of uh, we are ourselves uh, to blame on this, nobody else. We have to do our own work and to undo the myths that exist uh, in the society. Um, so uh, you uh, you name it, it's. Uh, uh, these myths are everywhere, and uh, young uh, and younger professional that's coming from high school, rarely he will say, "Okay, I'm going to think about science," unless he was educated in a such way. Uh, and this is where we come to the education. That's when what uh, and what uh, Nobel laureate uh, Dan Shetman used to say that the education about science should start uh, from the kindergarten. Uh, so this is a very original idea. I don't think they have applied yet uh, fully, but this is what uh, what it is. And then this is um, so quasi crystals and crystals and uh, and uh, uh, the human rotary theories. All these are uh, just um, uh, curiosity for the young generation. But in order that the young generator can be attracted on, on this field, it is to make science fun. Science is fun. For example, only during this presentation we made, we gave some different stories what happened uh, during uh, the history of Cozy Crystals, how nobody believed on those, and Jean Marie was the only one that believed uh, in the institute he created, and uh, his Jean Marie's leadership in, was an entrepreneur and leadership also. A position so he proven the discovery and the person that was ridiculized 30 years ago for something that nobody believed uh, and it was ridiculized by other colleagues and even famous colleagues then he got the Nobel uh, Nobel Prize so this kind of stories these background stories this uh, uh, human human stories behind the scientists this attract the young generation and this makes them uh, um, you know, brings them close to science, and this is this is very important because uh, scientists are referred always in plural. Mm -hmm. I okay. have mentioned this uh, all the time. If you see, for example, in, um, in uh, daily news, in uh, national news, in the evening news, so uh, there is no scientist mentioned by name. So they are all all referred as the scientist discovered this, the scientist. This, this in plural, etc. So there it's is almost a, like a generic thing, right? It's not like generic a generic thing. It's, a, it's, it's a, not specific. A generic, yeah. Yes, it's a generic drug. So, so that uh, well, imagine if I go, uh, if I have you heard in a TV news or in a evening news saying that uh, uh, Hollywood actors think like this, or you know, <laughs> uh -huh. yeah. Hollywood actors in India think like this. This is an offense for for uh, for the movie stars. 
You yes. cannot see my movie stars and so on. Mm -hmm. So this is the, what it is. Uh, what what's happening? What's happening in the world? Exactly. Today? So exactly. Uh, because um, you know, uh, and this is what SIPS brings about. We have, as Jean Marie used to say in one of the interviews he gave mm -hmm. in 2015 in Antalya, Turkey, that he likes the formula because uh, you have uh, it is focused on the people and then yes. on the subject. So mm -hmm. this is what SIPS it is about. So we are focusing on Professor Mizutami, mm -hmm. uh, but through Professor Mizutami, we are treating a very, you know, important discovery of the century, and that includes a Nobel laureate just because of the cosmic crystal. Not only for that, but as again, it is just one of Professor Mizutami. It was only one of Professor Mizutami, you know, achievement. So this is this is the formula. I think this is a winning formula, mm -hmm. bringing science to life. Scientists are human being. Scientists are stars. Scientists are all at the right side of the history. Mm -hmm. Although there are some always, yes. not always you, you can you can succeed in the first with the first attempt. But the famous scientists used to say you have to fail ten times to to uh, to uh, to, to um, succeed on the eleventh time. But bringing together all these scientists in in the same roof, this decreases a lot this uh, trial and error. So mm -hmm. if uh, if uh, uh, we, if the our classical expression is you have to fail ten times to succeed in one time, if you come to SIPS and you see the 360 degrees science, uh, the uh, most uh, most likely this n number of failure to, uh, until you achieve success, it will it is cut in half. So probably could be you can fail five times and and succeed in six times because you have all fields of science. You learn mm -hmm. from different techniques used in different fields of science. So to return to your question is that this is the way uh, to bring young generation to show the human side of scientists to show there is a person there this is not some abstract concept the scientists thought this the scientists said that that's just uh, you know like mouses said that the cat said that and so you know it's, it's uh, it should be like it is for hollywood stars should be not a, a good idea for uh, to refer to scientists they are human mm -hmm. beings, they are individuals, and uh, this is what SIPS is about. This is why we are concentrating in, in people that give contribution to science and technology and to sustainability, and this mm -hmm. makes it interesting. So SIPS, okay. I guess, is the only conference in the world that okay. has participants from 16 years old in high school mm -hmm. to 96 years old, Professor Marcus from California, in Paphos, Cyprus. So until now, we have this range from so, 16 year old to 96 years old. And not only this, high school students, Nobel Prize winner. Mm -hmm. Exactly. High school yeah, students so, 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 so the so, students are in touch, yes. in direct okay. touch with Nobel laureates. Uh -huh. There cannot be a better incentive for their career. So it mm -hmm. tells them that if you work in science, you become famous and you you create dreams, as San Marie said. You create, you you dream, and you make the dreams a reality. Mm -hmm. So, and this they see it with the Nobel laureates. So, this is just a theoretical concept. So, this is uh, to, re to respond uh, shortly to your question. This is a this is a new way to attract the mm -hmm. generation. It's an in, in, it, it is a it is a really something that uh, you know I think it, it is uh, effective and successful. This is uh, instead of just giving lectures. Science is good for this, science is good for this. These things are, we have tried this several years, they didn't bring any success. Number of science students generally goes down all, uh, every year. So this is a new uh, formula, and this brings them uh, to uh, to the phase of success. Very good. Uh, Professor uh, Mizutani, yes. uh, how, how, well, what's your experience with SIPS, your previous experience with SIPS? How many uh, editions? No, he has not been. been. This is for him. It, is the it's first your time. first time, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, w when you realized that you would be honored with the symposium, yes, and uh -huh. you could connect uh, science, because I have over 600 uh, scientific works presented, and also. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, uh, paradise. I always say that that P of SIPS stands for paradise. Yes, Be because uh, it's always uh, it always takes places. It always takes place in in 
paradise places, right? Rio de Janeiro, Cancun, uh, Paphos, uh, now Phuket Island. And do you think, what's your opinion of seeing like uh, scientists, engineers, researchers being stimulated to be both working with science and having a wonderful, a magnificent time in paradise. What's your opinion about this? Well, in, anyway, I had I had attended many international conferences in my life, but the coming SIPs is entirely looks entirely different from them. And uh, I was uh, John Marie Dwar uh, phoned me just last April and asked me to organize an international symposium at a coming uh, yeah. summit. And I hesitated to accept it because I'm already retired from uh, the work and uh, I, I was just doing uh, ex um, research at home. So, uh, but uh, John Marie only asked me to uh, work on this project. So I finally uh, decided to join. And so this is my first experience to just attend to the summit mm -hmm. in coming November. And uh, I, it, it, it is therefore, I'm really seriously thinking how to prepare my talks, uh -huh. including not only uh, scientists working in the same field, but also mm -hmm. other people like you, and that is big, <laughs> yeah, aim for me to do. Let, let, let me make a, a, a small so. Uh, uh, Doctor Flor, let me ask, let just you ask you a question. Yeah. Could you move to the? Let me see. To your left. This to way. your left. Mm. Yes, I think it's better this way. No, a little more, a little more, if you can. A little more? Because, yeah, because I think the sun moved, you have a mirror. Now it's much better. Yeah. Okay, okay. No, 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 Th this way, you, yeah, yeah, you, exactly, okay. exactly, dear. Okay. Better, better, much better. Okay, go ahead, I'm sorry. Well, uh, I see myself in the mirror there, okay. So now, like, now I don't see that myself in the mirror. Okay, so... Um, uh, Oh, just uh, by the way, a, you are you are at the, at the hotel right now, right? You are yes, at, at uh, West in uh, uh, Osaka. Yes. Okay. Yes, yes. Very good. So okay. um, there's a for Professor Mizutani is participating for the first time. Yes. And also there is a something that I want to to clarify. It is not. Uh, uh, it is Professor Mizutami is not organizing symposium, and this is something that uh, you know, since he is not used with the SIPs, uh, no, it is a symposium dedicated to Professor Mizutami lifetime achievement. He is not organizing it, so sure, he'll help with the conference, oh. etc. But <laughs> well, it is, it is uh, on his, it is uh, celebrate his life achievement, yeah, and but the symposium uh, bears his name. So well, I'm sure he can help it. He's an honorary. He's not uh, just uh, an organizer, uh, but he's used I, to the classical conferences I know that, that he used to organize. Uh, so well, this is this is to honor you. Well, okay? just a small correction. Uh, John Marie told strongly told me that uh, I am organizing the symposium, Mr. Tani symposium. That is his uh, request to me. No, so, no, no. Uh, I, it's okay. That no, is, this is. Eating. This is uh, this is a symposium. You are being honored as an only. That's why symposium bears your name. Very so, good. Uh, this is very okay. important. And, and this is a special characteristic about SIPs, Doctor Floyd, that you like to honor scientists and engineers that have contributed to a better world through yeah. their discoveries, through their yeah. research. So yeah. now the yeah. world is a much better place because of uh, Professor uh, Mizutani, uh, Mizutani's research. So, yeah, and, and you, 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 you do this, you honor this uh, uh, conquistadors. I mean, it, it's yeah. 
the, the, the science is the new border. As you say, there is no border mm -hmm. through for science, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, Professor Mizutani said he is retired. We yes. honored people. That we for us retirement means nothing. He's working from home, uh -huh. so uh, we uh, having uh, honor. Especially we have some criteria when we honor people. So he's one at his age. One at his he has to be retired generally, and also other criteria, scientific criteria. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, this is um, being retired is. Um, uh you know this is something that uh, we it's not uh, uh it is it is actually an incentive for us to honor people that are retired exactly. to honor their to honor their lifetime contribution mm -hmm. so uh, this is uh, this is uh, w what it is so being retired first is not the end of the career and also uh, we it is actually it is our criteria generally to honor mm -hmm. people that are retired and exactly. they have contributed exactly. their entire life. So yeah. we honor these people that basically the society considers them as with a plural name, the scientists. So yeah. um, and this is this is one of our goals, this our goals yeah. in organizing SIPs. Very interesting. Before I move to 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 Professor Dubois, Professor Dubois uh, went with, with last time we talked. Uh, maybe six or seven editions, I don't remember, but or maybe even eight. We, we counted last time, right, Professor? Do you remember how many? Because you're, you've gone since 2013, isn't it? I think as, uh, the first participation was in 2014. 14, in, 14, in, yes. In, in Cancun. In yeah. Cancun. So before uh, I talk to you, I'm going to show a little bit of that P that stands for Paradise of the next edition of SIPS and Phuket Island. So it's a one minute video and we're going to see the best of Phuket. SIPS Sustainable Industrial Processing Summit and Exhibition Sustainability through Science and Technology from the 27th of November to the 1st of December in Phuket, uh, uh, Hilton, Phuket, Acadia, Arcadia, in Phuket Island, Thailand. So, Dr. Florian, uh, I, th I think you want to say to mention something. No? Well, you see, uh, scientists are not used being honored by the society so even professor Mizutami misunderstood uh, that uh, he's organizing is not organizing he's being <laughs> honored sure he's going to help with the contacts and people because people that have worked during his career with the names of his colleagues etc so uh, but so it looks like being honored uh, to, to scientists and uh, and uh, and engineers looks like a different reality and sometimes they cannot perceive how this happened uh, I remember uh, in 2015 in Antalya, Turkey, uh, we had uh, uh, a CEO of um, of, uh, of mineral processing company that he has worked all his life in in the company. Uh, he is uh, he is also the owner of the company, and he mentioned uh, when you uh, the interview is available in the website has been there since uh, 2015. But since we are speaking about this, he said, "Look, when you are used to work, uh, un I mean, unannounced in the lower levels of engineering in the plants and in the uh, in the mineral processing machines, uh, you you never think 
about being honored. So it's kind of new reality you never think about. Uh, so uh, this is uh, this is what uh, he said in his interview. It is in the website. So uh, he said I got really surprised. So a conference was organized after in my honor and taking my name, and also I was honored at SIPS. So this is this was something that uh, I should tell my wife. He said because. Sometimes uh, we have, uh, you know, we have debate in our house that, uh, and she's always telling me, you're wasting time with science and engineering while the others are making money. Basically, this is the, you know, the, the story of scientists and engineers. So, um, but this is, uh, this is the reality today. And um, by the way, what happens, he, he was his first owner in his life because he works only with private companies in yes. in the field he builds a um, mineral processing machine etc et mm -hmm. so the his company so the moment we honored him in november uh, it was uh, i think it was august <coughs> no october october in antalya and then the society of mineral processing and the institute of mining in in canada awarded him two awards just six months after so from the yes. first award he never got and he was so you're, you're like, uh, you we opened the road for them. They they very, they thought that they had yeah. not honored enough, uh, you know, uh, this that uh, person. So yeah, and, so and this is something to, I'd like to, to talk to, to Professor Jean Marie, uh, because we met each other uh, for the first time in Rio de Janeiro. I even uh, interviewed you in Rio de Janeiro, and uh, this environment. You've been to many editions of SIPS since 2014, as you said. And you've seen young engineers and scientists being honored. You've seen uh, experienced engineers and scientists being honored. You've seen this stimuli of uh, excellence through uh, for scientists. What's How do you feel? You yourself were honored by SIPS. How do you feel? What's the, the as a scientist? What's the the feeling of of, of of this atmosphere? How do you and your peers react to this? Uh, because this is not uh, common in in uh, summits and conferences around the world. I've been to some, and this is like an exception, not a rule. Am I right or wrong about this? This. Well, to to award a young scientist is now becoming very very common uh, and it's it's a very important uh, issue because when you are how can i say this in in uh, polite terms but the the first the first award you receive is most probably the most important one it's like uh, when you are a gentleman and you fall in love the first lady is the most important one, who you will never forget. The, uh, the young scientists, they need a push now to get established in their career. And uh, the young scientist uh, prize, which SIPS is now awarding, uh, is, is very important because of the uh, statute of the, of the conference. It's a, an important conference. And uh, to continue to uh, honor a young, a young lady or a young gentleman who wants to, to do research, this is very important. I think uh, it happened in uh, Cyprus, in Patos, uh, two, three years ago, before COVID time. Uh, we uh, awarded uh, the prize in the symposium I was in charge to a young a young lady, and this helped her. And now she is a, a, a she got a permanent position, and uh, I think this uh, prize was a, a real important push for her to start. Very good. This, this should be continued by SIPS uh, over the years. Yeah. Now, of course, the uh, there's another prize which is important, which is the last one which you receive in your career. You never know that it is the last one. But uh, the prices, they, it's a cumulative in, uh, effect. 
and uh, it's it's very important to to receive to be honored and, and recognized but the first one is more important in my opinion and professor dubois i'm going to say something i was impressed and, and i think i never told you this uh, dr florian but i was impressed because the first tips i went to was in rio de janeiro and uh, i saw uh uh professor professor uh i forgot his name which one uh, the, the the scottish nobel laureate uh, who who specializes in nanotechnology fraser fraser exactly fraser I mean, stoddard exactly fraser stoddard i i I talked to him right after he won, he received uh, an award from SIPS. And I mean, the guy's a Nobel laureate. And you think, the, the, there is nothing that can top a Nobel Prize. Yes. And he was really touched by being honored by SIPS. Yes. Because uh, it, it was a different feeling. And he said, this for me now, at this moment, is more important than the Nobel Prize. That, that was that was so strong uh, that uh, that it's as you said the most recent award the most recent thing he, he got a Nobel Prize seven eight years before but that moment was something uh, different actually, actually no uh, among, he got among a Nobel peers Prize. Yeah. huh yes his Nobel Prize was 2016 in 16, Rio so like two, two or three years before two years yeah. ago two years ago yeah. in Rio it was 2018 oh yeah 2010 was game. Gaim, yeah. Gaim, right, yes, Andre right. Gaim, yes, and and uh, the question is, this uh, environment of because this is like uh, how can I say it's very, very common nowadays motivational approach. Let's call this uh, th this uh, recognition is very motivational for one's career. Doesn't matter at what stage of the career is it, is it right, Professor uh, Mizutani. For example, do you do you get more motivated with this uh, recognition? For example, mm -hmm. yeah. No, how you I, feel? How how do you feel about it? Motivation. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the okay. younger people, the. Uh -huh faster they acquire a lot of knowledges from the world so that is very important mm -hmm. so we must study when we are young okay. <laughs> that is a very important message i'm now too old to study new things unfortunately that is the truth no. No. i can't absorb many knowledges at this age Yes. Well, but you have a lot of experience to share with us, for sure. It's a well. It's a no, great I'm going to make a. I'm going to make a point here. Yeah. Okay. okay. I have a few words to Florian. Sure. Oh, yeah. sure. I was really surprised to find to learn from you that you are now in Japan. But more surprising things happens this morning. That is, uh, when you sent me email, I had a chance to check your video. You are, mm, uh, and I found in the video you graduated from Kohoku University. Correct. And My PhD. Got PhD there. there, and you also yeah. worked for Mitsubishi and Sumitomo. Is that right? Correct. Correct. Yes. Yeah. So I'm now feeling more closer to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Well, it's. Uh, well, well, Can we have you speak it's a long story. Japanese a little bit? Sorry? Can you speak Japanese a little bit? Well, I understand, but speaking of my thesis was in English. Uh, well, it's it's a it's a it's a particular um, it's a particular it's a particular story. Mine. Um, we uh, we had um, uh, the time I didn't have PhD, but uh, in our company we had a project with Mitsubishi and Sumitomo. A joint project, mm, and joint. then uh, in the beginning, uh, so the, that were those projects were successful. Um, the uh, but in the as, 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 so uh, you know, in, though they were happy, but uh, uh, 
they double check things with Professor Akira Yazawa from Tohoku University in, in order to make sure that because our conclusion uh, was completely different, not against the, the literature, but at the level of the at the level of the of the chemical reactors. So it's a different. It was completely a different conclusion that was not uh, found in literature. Actually, could have been considered con against the literature. I'm not going to details, but uh, so Professor Yazawa came to our group. He was convinced. And both companies applied our our uh, our uh, you know um, uh, project conclusions. At the time it was in paper. We're speaking long ago. There were no computers online. And uh, Professor Yazama, uh, Yazawa suggested that this work be included in the PhD is much more than two PhDs. So that's uh, that's the story of the PhD. Uh, from Tohoku University, I prepared all the work done for those two companies, mm -hmm. and we removed the confidential things for mm -hmm. sure. And this is the this is, is basically the uh, you know the the story of my but uh, my uh, we uh, we in Japan we have uh, several projects since that time. We had we had four projects in a row. And uh, those uh, those projects and publication on those projects with Professor Yazawa. Akira Yazawa is one of the best, actually the most famous person in copper in Japan. And uh, also uh, Professor Itagaki that I want to to uh, acknowledge here from Tohoku University also was uh, he is retired now. He deserved a, a, a symposium dedicated to him, but he is reluctant. What's his name again? Sorry. Uh, it's Professor Itagaki. Uh, Itagaki, okay. Yeah, Itagaki. Mm. So uh, anyway, this is. But we have many cooperation in Japan. We, we are uh, uh, we travel frequently in Japan. So has been uh, always. Has been. I've been all. I've, I've been basically all over Japan. Not in Hokkaido though. To, 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 uh, and. And I've not been in Okinawa. Okinawa probably will be one of the one of the site of SIPS in the future. Mm. Okinawa very, is very, a small island, very small in the, you know, it's a very tiny island in the in very the very ocean. I've heard a lot about the about Okinawa. Well, we're, yes, we're getting to we are getting to one but hour. But this is not about broadcast. me, by the way. Now, because we are turning the role, Professor Isadan yes. uh, is asking yeah. me. It's vice versa. We have to ask him. <laughs> exactly. So exactly. Yeah. So it was. So, a how you how you feel, Professor uh, Mizutani? So, uh, you know, I, I corrected uh, your impression. You are being honored. You are an honorary. The symposium bears your name, and you celebrate your lifetime achievement. Sure yeah. that you help with organizing because you know your colleagues better than us. So you provide the list, we invite them, but this is not organization. This is helping us organizing it with your contacts and uh, contacting people. Mm -hmm. But how you feel being honored? Well, I heartfully thank you, all of you. Include, anyway, first of all, I must express my deep thanks to Professor Jean-Marie Dubois for recommending me to this honorable award. Many, many thanks indeed. Thank you. Very good, very good, excellent. Well, uh, we are getting to uh, one hour of broadcast, of live broadcast from uh, four different cities, three different continents. Yes, well, I'm from Cabo Frio, I'm in Cabo Frio, Brazil, two hour drive from Rio de Janeiro. Dr. Florian Congoli is in Japan, in Osaka, right? Yeah. And Westing, uh, Westing, Professor Osaka Mizu Hotel. The Westing Osaka Hotel, exactly. Professor mm. Mizutani from Nagoya, Japan. Yeah. Yes. And uh, Professor Jean-Marie Dubois from his observatory. It's in the southern part of France, isn't it, Professor? Yeah. Somewhere in the south of France, yes. So, somewhere in the south of France. Uh, and so, by the uh, way, he has no problem with a telescope to see you on the other side of the world, reflecting yeah. to the stars. Yeah, you see, so he, can, he, he can see me, he can see Professor Mizutani, he can see you. 
Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> uh, Reflecting well, uh, through the stars. Yeah. You know, I, exactly, uh, exactly. Just figuratively. Very good. Well, uh, I'd like to, to, to have your final considerations. Yes, so each and one of you have uh, two minutes to, to say whatever you want about, about uh, SIPs, yeah. about this broadcast. I mean, feel free. So let's start Wait. with the honoree, with uh, Professor Uishiro Misutani. Good evening. Uh, good morning, Professor. Good morning. Okay. Yes. Well, I'm very looking forward to uh, seeing many participants at uh, coming SIPs 20, 2022. And I'm now preparing my talk. And, uh, you know, it, it must be prepared in a way different from the previous ones. So I must focus on much fundamental and uh, very, how can I say, uh, sim must be explained in simple words without using uh, expert, uh, I mean, uh, some scientific uh, complicated uh, terminologies. That is what I'm planning to do now. Thank you. Very good. Th thank you, Professor. And I'm looking forward to, to meeting you in person. Mm -hmm. And November, at the end of the of November, yes. Professor Jean Marie, your final considerations about tonight's broadcast and about SIPs. Okay, so f first of all, I'm very grateful to which you for accepting to to come to to SIPs. Okay. Uh, so far, the uh, the previous honorees of this series of symposia called CSAM, Science of intelligent and sustainable advanced materials was more on experimentalist. Mm -hmm. And for the first time, we have a theoretician who did a very deep understanding of what is going on in modern materials. So it's, uh, I'm very grateful to Uichiro Mizutani for accepting to, 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 to come and, and join us on this uh, uh, adventure. Uh, of course, the symposium will be around what he did uh, in his lifetime, but this encompasses a variety of uh, topics around uh, metals, alloys, intermetallics, complexity in uh, metallic systems, uh, electronic behavior, uh, properties, application or, of uh, those properties, essentially thermal electricity. So there is a lot of room for many people to come and, and, uh, and join uh, a community, a very broad community, who uh, is uh, um, stimulated and, and, and uh, guided by uh, Wichiro's uh, achievement. So please register, send abstract, and come to Phuket. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Very good, Professor Jamahi Dubois. And about this that uh, Professor Jamahi Dubois said, I would like to have you have your final considerations, but I would like to you to include Professor uh, Dr. Florian. Uh, the following situation. I am a scientist. I am an engineer. I have a scientific work to present. And there's a great synergy with uh, Professor... Mizutani's International Symposium. What do I have to do? How can I participate? Well, it's very easy. Mm -hmm. It's open to everyone. This is, um, uh, you don't need invitations, but uh, if you uh, need invitation, we're gonna send it to you, but this is open to an, everyone. It's not an invitation only uh, symposium. It is open to anyone, anyone that has worked with intelligent materials. Anyone that was in quasi chemicals and also uh, also sustainable advanced materials that relates to the Professor Mizutani work or the subject of and topics of the symposium is free. Just to go in the website, uh, submit their abstract, and then the procedures uh, the procedure follows. It's a very easy procedure. So uh, it's open to anyone, uh, even to those that think, okay, they have a discovery, but uh, has not been well understood from the others. Some, they are reluctant to present their work. There are many like this uh, among the scientists. 
uh, and this is a uh, this is, shouldn't be like this. Uh, it shouldn't be like this because uh, any discovery, you know, can be improved any time. And also, uh, if somebody criticizes you on a discovery, it doesn't mean that the critic, that the, the person that criticizes you, it is uh, they're in the, on the right side. And this we have many stories about Nobel laureates that have passed the same, uh, that have passed in the same path, and then they succeeded at the end. So uh, it's open to everyone as long as it is scientific, it is not uh, and respectful. Uh, we uh, accept everybody, open arms. We do not take sides. We give the, uh, the, 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 the debate podium to all scientists for interaction, for debate. And through this debate, the, the chances that uh, you achieve success faster, uh, you know, are much, much greater. And the chances that you succeed success faster when you discuss about science in a paradise event where you are by the beach in a retreat like uh, atmosphere are much higher than you are just in your office isolated and without uh, proper communication human communication is important um, you know jean marie in one of the interviews said that uh, if you uh, if you want really to part to uh, to profit from international conference, you have to come and be face-to-face uh, -face with other scientists, not through Zoom. Through Zoom is a pre-calibrated, he said uh, previously, um, exchange of information. But that's it. Uh, conferences and SIPs is not like that. In SIPs, there are many multidimensional, multi, uh, multidisciplinary projects and multi-country projects being established every year because people know each other they have interaction they become like a family and this uh, this makes the you know the uh, distinguish between countries between uh, cultures and uh, and between uh, fields of science uh, you know fade away uh, and this is uh, this is uh, what sips is about and that that's why it has been so successful so that's uh, you saw this the, you see the, the um, you know the the profit you is, is touchable it is it's not intangible it's tangible profit coming uh, to sips and it's uh, it is tangible in a really short time not in a long time so uh, that's it it's very easy to participate if you want an invitation drop us an email if you have any doubt if you are if you do not you are not sure we are there we respond to our email as a rule within 48 hours so you can contact directly Professor Jean Marie. You feel free to contact Professor Mizutami. So they are there, and uh, sure, us from Flogen are always there, 24 hours a day. You see, now I am in, uh, I am in uh, Osaka, Japan. So I'm not in my office. I am in the hotel room. And since the sun, from the seven o'clock in the morning, now it's eight o'clock, changed the position. Uh, you know, it's very difficult for me to find a position that really throw light. No, it's, it's all, okay. It's okay. It's all mirrors. It's all mirrors everywhere. So if I turn from the window, I have the light behind uh, behind me. But in this position, I have the mirror that reflects the window. No, but, 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 so, but it's good enough. So we can see we can is, see you well. Don't worry. <laughs> so this is uh, this is no. But I mean that you know we are 24 hours. On time. This is the Working interesting thing tips. about this 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 broadcast about sips of science because I mean here I've got I mean we are around the globe I mean I'm 180 exactly. degrees from you we are 12 hours exactly. away and, exactly. and Professor Jamahi is seven hours away from you five hours away from me I mean we are around the globe we are around <laughs> exactly. the globe the, the globe is so too small for us and this it's is too small this for is us by the by the observatory <laughs> of Jean Marie. Exactly. How small we are, January. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's amazing. I'm, it's amazing. It is. I made, well, guys. Two days ago, I made a picture of four galaxies. Wow. Which, which right. were... Um, Do you have are, you able to, are you able to show it? No. No, oh, it no. would take too much time. But oh, it, okay. it's one of the one of the beautiful pictures ah. that, that were taken by the James Webb uh, Space Telescope in the infrared. Interesting. Mm -hmm. interesting. And Very I, interesting. I did it with my telescope. Of course, it's uh, my, my picture is just miserable compared to the to the picture of James Webb. 
But mm -hmm. look, these galaxies are 400 million light years from, mm -hmm. from the Earth. Wow. 400 million times 10,000 billion kilometers. Wow. So, and you could see them. This is fantastic. This uh, is fantastic. Jean-Marie, we should, we should put astronomy in ships. <coughs> It would be great. Oh, no. it would astronomy, be great. astronomy. I think they have the the professional astronomers. They have their own meetings. But uh, yeah, well, doesn't matter. We we are different completely. <laughs> yeah, amateur astronomy. Okay, amateur astronomy. So whatever you are doing, so you are <laughs> the specialist, much much more than us. There, when I see the much more, the much more. So well, you are in the dome. You are inside the dome, correct? Yeah. Yeah, it's incredible. It's incredible. Easy sun is We cannot open it because it's raining, but it's also night. Uh, night time. And, and thank so you very much for this opportunity of seeing you in the observatory, Professor. Yeah. But well, I mean, uh, this, is, this is where he stays. He stays during at midnight. So there now it's one o'clock. But this is where he stays until four a.m. Yeah, he told me it's from <laughs> from before we went live. He told me it's from. 10, 10 in the evening to 4 in the morning, right, Professor? Yeah, he stays in the dome. It is his second second night home. <laughs> well, or research home. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Well, guys, that's it. We're uh, getting to the end of our broadcast, of our weekly broadcast, every Thursday at uh, 10 p.m. Uh, GMT, Greenwich Mean Time. We're going to be here. Yes, uh, this week Dr. Florian Kongoli is in Japan. We have the honor of we had the honor of having uh, Professor Uishiro Mizutani, uh, who's uh, who, who is honored in Nagoya by sorry, Doctor. He's in Nagoya, not far. He's from in me. Nagoya, exactly. Uh, which uh, bear uh, the symposium, the international uh, uh, Mizutani International Symposium is named after. And also, I had the honor of talking once again to Professor Jean-Marie Dubois. It was a pleasure seeing you again. And before I say goodbye, I'm going to show here really quickly uh, another uh, short movie about another teaser here uh, uh, for SIPS, the Sustainable Industrial Processing Summit and Exhibition, Sustainability Through Science uh, and the... Uh, opportunity to see 600 of some of the greatest minds in the world, including this uh, three guests of mine here tonight. Well, it was a pleasure having you here, and let's take a, a quick look at SIPS again. Well, that's it. This is a Sips of Science. It's a joint production between TV on the Zoo and Floating Star Outreach. It's a pleasure having you here, as I said, every Thursday at 10 p.m. GMT. I'm going to be with Dr. Florian Congoli and always some of the greatest minds in the world to talk about sustainability through science and, and, and technology. That's it. I'm Marlon Linares. It was a pleasure talking to you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.